What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Creative Culture. Uh, today, I have a very, very special guest. I'm actually going to read a little bit, and then I'm just going to let him go, and we're just going to have a great conversation. Today, there's no questions. There's just going to be a great conversation with, I believe, a great friend. So before I introduce his name, I want to introduce uh, some stuff that he has done. So he's originally from Guatemala, grew up without a father, and also went through an abusive mother. Started to drink very young, came to United States at 14, started as a dishwasher and cleaning bathrooms, almost died four times. Yes, I said four times. Became a full-blown alcoholic, drinking almost 55 beers a day. Became a father and a stepfather at 19, been sober for 17 years by the grace of God. He's a producer, actor, writer, and entrepreneur. And I'm going to get to the rest of these, but I'm going to introduce him now. Give a warm welcome to my friend, Julio Lopez Velasquez. Como estas? Bien, bien. Thank you for having me. Oh, you know, man. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, man. Uh, mm -hmm. There's more that we're going to get into, so I'm going to wait to give the rest. But yes. um, like in the beginning, I said, man, you came here at the age of 14 and you came from an abusive family. You know, your mother was abusive and then you didn't have a father. So uh, let's get to the young Julio before we get into the Julio today. Well, I think, you know, uh, uh, I remember when I was like about six, seven years old, you know what I mean? My mom used to find me watching uh, uh, black and white movies at two o'clock in the morning. I'm supposed to go to, to, <laughs> to, to school and then she's right there behind me with a bell trying to make me go to sleep, you know what I mean? I think, you know, uh, not having a father really affected me, but I wanted to be tough about it, you know? My mom, uh, she grew up, you know, getting beat up, so that's what she knew. She became a mom when she was 15 for, uh, with, my dad, with my brother, and then 17 when I when I was born. So uh, at that time, I couldn't understand it. You know what I mean? I just couldn't understand the beatings and everything. But that's how she grew up. And that's what she knew. You know, uh, thank God, you know, that everything changed after after <laughs> a few years back, after I came back to Guatemala and we talked about it. But it's just, you know, it was tough because uh, nobody understood me. Mm -hmm. I, I I was the kind of guy who was always, always had, uh, you know, nightmares. Uh, I sleepwalk. I used to wake up sometimes in the streets already. Oh, wow. And I was so afraid to go to the bathroom that I will be in, in bed. You yeah. know what I mean? So uh, I went through all this trauma. You know what I mean? My nightmares were horrible. The beatings, you know what I mean? Everything, you know what I mean? But I, I tried to always play it off. You know, I have yeah. that, that imagination. And maybe that's why I love movies. Maybe that's why I love dancing and everything. You know, I used to watch ballet. In people in what you imagine Guatemala, Ballets. we're talking about like a, people we go like, a, What why are you watching ballet? I'm like, It's artistic, you know what I mean? Yeah. But nobody could understand, it's very that. artistic. And my and my mom couldn't understand that, you know, all the nightmares and stuff like that. She even took me to, to get exorcism, thinking that I was possessed, you know what I mean? But wow. in, in a, it was really, really rough to be honest with you. But I always kept it quiet, you know, I always wanted to be tough by uh, and I used to hide in corners and, and imagine things and stuff like that. but it got to a point, you know, where, you know, uh, my mom, you know what I mean? She got tired of me maybe being in bed, you know, that uh, she sent me out and I had to go and sell rocks door to door. Wow. And that was the most embarrassing thing that I always kept to myself for many, many years because it got to a point, you know, that I, I, uh, she woke me up about, uh, on a Saturday and she goes to me, there was a big, you know, uh, like a canasta, they call it, you know, mm -hmm. full of rocks. And, and I'm peed out because I didn't want to get up to go to the bathroom. I was scared to go to the bathroom. It was so far away from where I sleep. And she goes, get up. Now, you, you either you're going to stop or we're going to or, or we're gonna wow. make you stop. And I remember going out with my pajamas, you know, uh, smelling like pee in, at 11 o'clock in the morning. And, and she's with a belt, like a, maybe like a half a block behind me and knocking on the doors with the rocks. I remember knocking on the first door and this lady come out. The first thing she goes, oh, this smell, of course, you know what I mean? And she just looked at me and she was like, mijo, uh, what do you want, you know? And I'm, I'm crying, crying. Like, and I'm like, will you please buy rocks? And I'm crying, I'm embarrassed. And, and she looked at me, I can see her eyes getting all watery. And she goes, how much are they? You know? And I didn't know the price, so I was like, five cents. She goes, give me two. So... I give it to her and I'm thinking, okay, that's it. I'm turning back and I'm going back home. I learned my lesson, you know, but it, it wasn't about a lesson. It was like, I, I was scared. And she's behind me and she goes, no, you're going to continue. Next door, it was one of the memorable ones because that's when I knock on the door and typical Latino, you know, come with a white kind of dirty t-shirt, smell like alcohol is still. And she goes, what do you want? You know, and I was like, and I start crying. I'm like, would you please buy, buy rocks? And he, he was tough, you know what I mean? And he just looked at me, and I can see his eyes getting watery. He goes, how much are they? You know, trying to be, you know, tough. Yeah. tough. And I looked down, 
And I don't know why I say 10 cents. Why did I raise the price? Why did I do that? That moment I couldn't understand. And, she, and he goes, okay, give me two. That continued for another maybe like a five or six hours. Finally, I came back with all this money, you know what I mean? And I throw it on her feet and I'm just crying, you know what I mean? It was the most embarrassing thing. But that's something that I always kept to myself. I needed anybody to know. Uh, years later, you know, somebody, uh, you know, uh, uh, finally I'm doing acting classes, you know, years later. We're going to get into that later on. Yeah. And we have a, a, a comedic uh, classes that we were learning with a, a good friend of mine. He was an amazing actor. He killed himself, I remember now. And he goes, you have to use everything that you have. Wow. You know what I mean? Because not only is going to be therapy, and, and I was always scared to talk to anybody to find that out. You know, that I pee in bed. They, and now, how, you know, when we start going into it, you know, when I open my comedy, I think I go like, a, you know, okay, my name is Julio Armando Lopez Velasquez, and I added more last names, you know, like a typical Latino, yeah, yeah. And, I like a, and I love to pee in bed. <laughs> and, that, and people will start laughing, yeah, and yeah. I love it. So right there I understood, you know what I mean, the, everything that we go through, and it's embarrassing to us, it's the things that made us, and, 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 mm. and, and it's, it's, it's the things that, that you know, the, the, the story that we have to tell. Because when I got to that point, I, uh, then I understood, oh my God, I was an entrepreneur when I was seven years old. I went from five cents to 10 cents. You know what I mean? You start understanding how God puzzles everything in tissue, but you have to accept your past and you have to, and it, that, it's like a little victories, you know, a step stones that is going to take you to the place. But if you don't accept those step stones from behind and you want to forget about it, you're never going to get to the top. And I understand and from that moment, I remember I started opening my chest and just letting people know everything about myself. And that made me free too. So if that was the beginning in Guatemala, I remember uh, not having a dad was tough because my mom will show up mm -hmm. at, at the father's, you know, like a father's day. And I will tell my mom, don't show up. And then I, I, I end up being beat up or I, I start beating up somebody, making fun of me that I was a bastard. You know what I mean? So I went through all the different stuff, you know, and finally in 2013, you know, my father come back. He left us when I was five months old. Wow. And, you know, but I, I always, you know, I felt always that my mom always has preference for my older brother, not me. It was always something that I couldn't understand, you know what I mean? Why? I remember one time having holes on my shoes and my brother was supposed to do a play. And I go, mom, I have holes in my shoes. It's raining. Look. And I go, I have holes. Can you buy me shoes? No, I'm going to buy those white shoes for your uh, brother because he has a play. I'm, I couldn't understand my mind how a, a, a mother will let me be with holes than buying. A, and I couldn't understand. And buy the, the other one that has. Exactly. It was yeah. just, it, and I remember that it started raining really hard. I'm coming out of the school. Everybody's pushing me to get out. You know, you know how it rains in our countries. And, and I didn't want to get out because I knew all that water was going to go in my shoes. But all of a sudden, you know, I start crying again. And I was mad. I mean, I, I was mad. And I put my my first uh, foot in the water, whoosh, it goes into my, and I put the second one, and then I start walking. Everybody was running, but I was just walking, walking, walking. And those I think, are uh, things that we carry with ourselves, you know, until you can talk about it and you can release them, you know what I mean? And that's a conversation that I had with my mom later, and what I came to find out is that my dad, when he used to come to the house, I wasn't born yet, my, my brother was one year old, he will come drunk, beat up my mom, mm -hmm. and then my brother will start screaming, ah! and he will kick my brother, and he will crawl into under the bed. What happened, they couldn't leave the bed because they were su super heavy at that time, and he will scream, and he's trying to grab him. So my mom always felt powerless. She didn't tell me this, but I figured out where she wanted to, she couldn't defend my brother. Wow. So when it, it was growing up, she was just baby him, you know what I mean? And I came to find out that I remind her of my dad. So that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it was, you know, I couldn't understand, you know what I mean, my name how I look and stuff like that. So those things were, you know, and finally I met him. He came, he wanted to hug me. I'm like, don't touch me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, he already lived in the United States for 14 years, you know, and he go, oh, you can come over and, and stuff like that, you know. And at that time I, I wasn't planning, you know, but my mom got married again and I didn't fit on the house anymore, you know what I mean? And I decided to come. But that's how the journey started. But there were many things when I was growing up, you know, that if we get into those, oh, forget it, you know, I'm getting yeah. beat up, you know what I mean? Uh, getting, you know, uh, you know, it was always, if something was happening in the house, it was Julio's fault. If my, if my brother <laughs> will, if we, will, will take my mom yeah. jewelry to sell it to go out with a woman, it was Julio. It was always that. And the beatings, they were not pretty. There were beatings where we couldn't go to school for a week or two, where we get fever and we throw up. 
and we don't number to in the bed because of the of the beatings. You know what I mean? It was just like a, a so we were so scared that when we go places and she would look at us, we, we start crying. Because you already knew. I knew. And, and she goes like, don't move from here. Three hours, you know, a kid, you move. Yeah, you can. And when, when she make the look, you like, a, so you're crying all the way home. You know what I mean? And then at home, she doesn't do anything. You take your clothes off, there it comes. You know what I mean? So it was, yeah, it was, it was tough. But at the same time, I knew the art, the, you know, film, they will take me there. You know what I mean? I remember watching Michael Jackson thriller and he started dancing yeah. and everything. And Such I, an incredible produced Yeah, and uh, I'm just watching thriller. Video. I'm like, yeah. this is what I want to do. I want to dance. I want to act. I want to produce. So it was something, you know, and I wanted to have my own business. Too. I, I felt it when I was little too, you know, I, I didn't want to be dependent to anybody. So I think everything came from like, and that's why God does, you know what I mean? When he deposits something in your soul, in your heart, in your mind, in your brain, it can go away. It can be dormant for a long time, but it, it, it doesn't go away. Do you think that um, the unfortunate things of your mom doing the abusive uh, acts towards you and your brother, do you think that almost pushed you to become uh, in searching of those fantasies of thriller, you know, such an incredible music video, things like that. Do you think that that pushed you uh, to almost draw near to that because you would see something that was almost like, I guess you can say fantasy mm -hmm. and it like drew you to want to do something. I think, you know, I had something about movies because they always a uh, music and dancing for a long time. But I think when I, 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 we, I used to go into those dark places where you get beat up, where, yeah. where you don't feel wanted, where you don't feel seen, that I, that I, 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 I was drawn to, to the fantasies, to writing, uh, you know, in, in, in thinking about films and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? I think that was my safe place. Yeah, okay. You're that was like my place. safe place, you yeah. know what I mean? Because nobody could take that away. No. I remember we used to have a big, a, a long table, you know, those long tables, wooden ones with like a, like a 10 or 12 or 15 chairs. And I used to go in the middle in all those chairs. And that was like my castle. That was like my safe thing. And I used to go and think about movies and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, you know, that was my safe place. Nobody can touch me there. No, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I you, you saying that reminds me of when I was a child, I would always go underneath our table. And to me, that was my mansion. Mm -hmm. To me, that was my business. Exactly. At one point, that was my church, you know? Like, exactly. Because, huh? you know, growing up, you know, I was fortunate to have my father. So him being a pastor my entire life, oh, that's awesome. it was it was like, well, this is my congregation. You know, I put the teddy bears there. And it was all <laughs> underneath. Awesome. It was all underneath the table. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the body, when I was reading it, you know, you're talking about Guatemala, but now you transition at the age of 14 to come to the United States. What even got you here? Because Guatemala to, <laughs> to the United States is a very, it's not close. No, what happens is, uh, you know, when I saw that my mom uh, started this new relationship, he, he's awesome, you know what I mean? He, uh, uh, too bad he had dementia now, but he, he was awesome with me. Always he teach me how to do weights and stuff like that. But any mistake that I will make in that house, it, it was, you know, mm -hmm. so I just, I didn't, I didn't feel like I fed, you know, and my dad, before he, he left, he told us, oh, you can, you're welcome to come. You're welcome to, to you know, you're going to go to school, all, all these offerings, you know what I mean? So I just told her, you know, I'm leaving. And she goes, okay, leave. So I remember just calling him, you know what I mean? I got a one-way ticket. And it's funny because when, when I was trying to go and go, it's like, okay, mom, bye. You know, you get all sentimental. She goes, you're back. I'm like, okay, I'm leaving now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so it was something there, you know what I mean, that I didn't feel wanted. Getting to a plane uh, at those times when you were a minor, they will sit you in the cockpit. Oh, yeah. yeah they, they will they pull would. one out like that and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, the plane started taking off. And all of a sudden, it's like, eh, 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 start going off. I'm like, oh, I'm like, what is going on? And one of the engines went out. And the plane, oh. ah, I started going like this. And I'm like, uh, what is going on? And I'm freaking out, you know, but I'm not screaming. I'm just like, oh, and I see going this, like this. Finally, he got control of it. He landed the, the plane back in Guatemala and we waited for another hour. So finally, we, we ended up have to stay in Mexico. Another plane came over and we went to Mexico. So that was my first place. I had $20, $20 and I went to see with this couple that they thought that I was older, you know, and I didn't say anything, you know. And at that time, one thing that I forgot to do, you know, when I met my dad, I met he, uh, my, my dad's family and I started drinking when I was 13. That's the first time that I, I you know, grabbed, you know, a, you know, uh, like a rum 
in a beer, you know what I mean? And I drink when I met them, you know, hey, you want a drink? I'm like, yeah, and you take a big thing. Alcohol comes out, almost out of you now, a nose. And then I grab a beer, you know what I mean? And that's how you, you will drink, you know, when you were a kid. And that's when, when the alcohol started too. Because when I felt that, that feeling of, oh, I don't, I, I don't, I have to feel wanted. I don't want it to feel me. You know, I feel good. You know what I mean? And that's the feeling that I started getting. It so, alters your mind. Exactly. When I got to, to Mexico, the same thing, you know, I was already drinking a beer over there. I was, you know, I was 14 years old. Finally, I get to the United States and it wasn't what he offered. You know what I mean? And because what, when we came over here, it was about not going to school. It was about uh, making money and paying him rent giving him, you know, paying for his bills, paying for everything. He wow. was, he was a, flu, a, a flu, you know, a, a, well, a, a, an alcoholic too. And basically, you know, I'm like, I'm going to go to school next day. He goes, no, you have to get up. We're gonna, you're going to go to work. I'm like, uh, it's cool. Well, you have to work first. I'm like, okay. So I dress up all nice. You know what I mean? I, I'm thinking I'm going to go work, you know, I get into a restaurant and all of a sudden all the way to the back. And they go, okay, this is your station. This is washer station. Here is a, an apron. You know those apron plastic ones that smell? Stink. Stink. Yeah. stink. You put it on, you know what I mean? Okay, here's how you do this. You push this button. This guy who hardly speaks Spanish, was, his name is Joe Mata. I still remember he's a, 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 a super cool guy. And he ch teach me how to do everything. I'm like, okay, what are you going to do? So I'm all dressed up and, and I start washing dishes. All of a sudden, um, one of the cooks come with all these pans. And he goes to me, careful, it's hot. In Guatemala, when they teach you a little English, they go, hot is a hat. Hot is, is hot. You know what I mean? So it's completely different pronunciation. So I look at him, I'm like, ah, uh -huh. and I grab the pants. And I, I burn myself, like, almost the skin fell off out of my, my hands. And, you know, and, and, but it, the funny thing that I laugh about it, because that's how I learned hat. <laughs> what hat means, you know what I mean? But that's, that's, how, you, yeah. that's how you learn, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and now I laugh about it, but it wasn't funny. They have to put all this, they gave me gloves, they put all these bandages and I have to continue. Uh, we used to walk like seven miles to the house, you know what I mean? Because we didn't know how to take a bus. We didn't speak English at nighttime all wet. But what happened, that restaurant used to turn into a disco. And it was just funny because, you know, the first day, you know what I mean? I'm washing dishes and we used to finish like around three o'clock in the morning. Okay, Julio, it's your turn to go and clean the bathrooms. And, like, and they give me a hose, a big hose that you have to plug in. Like, I'm all like a, like a fire hose. And when the restaurant goes into a disco, imagine everybody drinking. And when you go into that bathroom, oh my God, you can find puke, everything. You know, number twos all over. It was awful. And you just go and you have to spray the whole walls and clean everything. That thing will splash back to you. And then, you know, you try to clean yourself as much as you, but you stink. And then you have to walk home. And when we get home, we couldn't take a shower. Because we will, he didn't want us to take, make any noise because we were going to wake up his wife. So there you go. Four of us in one little room, two twin beds, smelling like that. And we couldn't take a shower until next day. And it was, you know, those, those were the moments that, you know, sometimes you almost want to throw up in yourself. You're like, Whoa! you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you can't take a shower. And it just turns into, into a real nightmare for a while. You know what I mean? It's, you know, the day that, uh, you know, finally, uh, you know, because he was a citizen already. Three or four months later, I think, or six months later, I, I can't remember exactly, you know, I go to the mail and we got our green cards. Mm. And I'm like, oh my God. He would have got it because he used to scare us. Don't go out. Immigration is out there in Santa Clara, <laughs> Silicon Valley, that, you know. But that was the scary thing, you know what I mean? And he was always drinking, you know. Uh, he will, will grab a, a, a gallon of alcohol, of, 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 of uh, milk, dump half, and put a, a bottle of vodka inside. So every day we'll see that he's drinking Milk, drinking milk, but, it but no, it was milk. alcohol. It was alcohol. Uh, you know, and basically, you know, uh, all of a sudden, you know, the lady who was renting there, he, she says, you know, look, I have another house. Uh, my uh, the, the parents were hoarders. If you guys clean it up, I'll rent it to you for really a small amount and stuff like that. And there we go. You know, a 14-year-old, 15-year-old, 16-year-old, and 17-year-old, we leave my dad and we go and live on our, on our own. So now at 14, you know what I mean? I'm living on my own and, and working. And for six months, I think we ate AM, PM mini market hamburgers <laughs> because it, I think it used to be like 35 cents for two of them. But that's all that we knew when we were not working. At the same time, we were drinking. I was drinking too, my days off, you know, that the, I, and I, I tried to go to high school. I couldn't handle it. Why? Because, you know, I had to work at, at six o'clock the, and then get home until four or five o'clock in the morning. And I couldn't, but 
eventually I made it to Dianza College and I started taking ballet classes. I started taking theater classes. I started taking acting classes. I couldn't understand anything they were saying, to be honest with you. And the teacher yeah. will go, do this, do that. And I, and I couldn't, you know, but I, yeah. I, but I did it, you know. So that was the beginning of living on my own completely at 14, you know what I mean? And you start going like, oh, wow, you know, anything, if you want something, you work for it. Uh, but at the same time, drinking, partying, you know what I mean? And, and working on my dream at the same time. So I was doing everything, you know, at the same time. But alcohol was one of the, of my- Strongholds. Uh, strongholds, because it was, it will get me through, through my, uh, you know, the, when I feel worthless or anything like that. You it know almost I mean? like numbed you because you got it such at a, well, at 13 years old, your first drink, mm -hmm. and then you became, you just kept drinking from there on. It's crazy to think that, um, such a, a substance like that can alter your mind to change how you feel you're 14 years old you're you're living the life of a 30 34 year old you know exactly. of a 24 year old you're mm -hmm. living you know you're living on your own you're working and going trying to go to school and living on your own it's like you don't know how to take care of yourself exactly so it's like well then i'm just gonna drink away so that way i don't have to feel almost life right exactly because you get to a point that where, where you uh, you want parents you know you see families and everything but you you don't have that but at the same time you know i'm so grateful for all that because it, it, it makes me tough in in certain things in my life and it showed me the reality of life early on too so yes. those those are things where, where, where there is no no, like, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to go to, I'm going to finish high school and I'm going to go to Europe for one year. You know, no, nothing like that. It's like, a, if you want to go to Europe, you better work hard and something like that. So I, I just, you know, so that was the transition. And then, you know, I started I start doing theater. I started speaking a little bit more English. I started doing all this different stuff. But at the same time, I started going out with my cousin uh, ID to, to uh, 21 year, uh, year uh, you know, discos and stuff like that. That's where I met my ex-wife, you know, and she's five years older than me, 23. You know, at this point, I'm 18. Wow. I've been drinking. I already, you know, you know, at 18, I have my first UI, you know, and, and I'm partying and stuff like that. And we go out for a few months, you know what I mean? Then it doesn't work out. But after uh, we break up, you know, I find out that she's pregnant. And we try to work it out. And, and you know, and it's, uh, my alcohol is getting a little bit bigger over there. In all of the story, you know what I mean? She said, you know, look, you know, I help as much as I could, but I, when I saw my kid uh, born, I go to myself, I can't do the same thing that my dad did. I cannot become the same person, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I decided to stay and I told her, hey, come and live with me. So that's, she had uh, my stepson that I love, you know, Angel, you know what I mean? He, uh, uh, he was six years old. So I became a, a stepdad, you know, and, and a dad, dad at 19. First time <laughs> exactly. that you're taking care of two kids and, and, and a lady. Exactly. That, that's crazy. In, in, uh, now, now forget about acting. Now forget about everything. Everything goes out the doors. This was a uh, bus boy and janitor. Three jobs. Then I, I, I did, you know, if you want to find out any kind of job, I did it. I did it all. You did it all. But I had to do it to, sur to survive. So basically, you know, there is now a, I'm, a, a, I'm responsible. You know what I mean? So now it's just about getting this, this family, you know, have a place to live and stuff like that. So my dreams go out the door. I, you know, I, st I start working and doing everything that I can. And finally, you know what I mean? Through a lot of breaks, you know, I start working for a wireless company that is GT Mobile and that is Verizon now. And they hired me to, after losing a job, you know what I mean? Working in Apple computer because layoffs and all that different stuff. And I start, I start getting into sales. And I didn't, that's where the entrepreneurial part comes. You know what I mean? I start yeah. selling well and I start doing well and everything start growing, money start coming. But when more money comes in, my drinking is getting dear because Heavier. I'm not realizing that I'm so ups, uh, so uh, miserable because I'm not doing what I love, what I was called to do. You know, you know what I mean. And I remember, uh, you know, drinking more in one time. You know, driving and I hit a, a, a parked car at seventy miles an hour. Wow! It, I get ejected from the car. I don't remember anything. I wake up four days later uh, in a coma. Uh, from a coma, it, it make, make me breathe. And they told me, we didn't think you were going to make it. And I'm like, I just look around. I'm like, oh, where am I? I'm like, oh, Halloween party. Now I remember. When I go and see that car, half of the car is gone. And they say they, they thought that I was dead because I was, all, all, you know, in a pool of blood. 
and they say they could they didn't know if I was going if I was brain dead or something like that. You know what I mean? But I that's the first time that I go, okay, God, you know. But I couldn't get it that time. I just felt tougher, you know what I mean? And kept on making money, got into real estate, opened cell phone stores and stuff like that, and started making money. Always entrepreneur always came in. You know what I mean? And not, I haven't worked for anybody since 1999. And that's because of 14 years old, you were living on your own. Exactly. You know, your mom let you leave, mm -hmm. nah, leave, you're mm -hmm. gone. And then your dad, first thing he says is, you're not going to school, mm -hmm. you're going to work. Exactly. And then you find a place, lady says, if you guys clean this out, cheap rent, you end up moving. Mm -hmm. And then, so you're all along, you're already, even though you're technically working for somebody, you're working for yourself. Exactly. And then that's why it was easy for you to kind of like get into you know this the phones and then get into real estate exactly it was just funny because one day uh, i find out that they were paying more money to the people who resell the service for for cell phone and i'm like okay i'm leaving that's crazy 1999 that was my last time working for a corporation and it was amazing you know what i mean because now i have a cell phone store i'm making more money and stuff like that but at the same time i'm not happy you know, I'm no, uh, there's you know, still, there's still something empty. Yeah, inside. we still, if we're flying to Europe, we're doing this, we're doing the, everything materialistic, you know what I mean? Egotistic too. And I always believe in God, but it wasn't like, a, you know, the, the, the faith that I have now. And the same thing, you know, kept on drinking and all of a sudden one time, you know, I, uh, I hurt my knee. And I started uh, uh, taking, uh, you know, Vicodin. And now mm, it's Vicodin geez. and alcohol. That's strong too. Yeah. And I overdose. Wow. And I go into a coma too again. Oh, and, two basically, already. and there we go. And they revive me and everything. And they go like, okay, you know what I mean? It's like a second time. God is right there again. You know what I mean? And I, I couldn't, you know, and, and I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it because I was so lost in, in, in now the alcohol in making all this money. Then I get in, uh, you know, uh, I, we start getting separation with my ex-wife and now I get into real estate and now I'm making more money. Yes. And I'm like uh, flying, you know, work ups uh, in, 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 in France, uh, all this Doing stuff, everything. everything, you know, and just gets, it got really, really crazy, you know, and all of a sudden one time, you know, I come home and my stomach started getting swelled up and swelled up and swelled up and I end up in, in the emergency and they say, you have pancreatitis, your pancreas is so swelled up. They, we don't know what to do. So what happens, they put a tube in my, in my arm to feed me because I couldn't drink water, no ice, no nothing because your pancreas give you the gastric fluid and they say we have to wait for, the, for the, all the swelling to go down oh, and, and I will do my own morphine. And it's funny because that's crazy. I, that's when I was going through the separation, I was going through everything and I tried to turn on the TV and the control falls out of my hands, hit the, the bed, the TV turns on and there's Joe Austin. And I'm like, uh, what? You know, and he goes, like, he started talking about divorce, you know, addiction, everything that I was going through. And I started crying like a baby, crying. Because you're experiencing that on, a de on basically your deathbed. Exactly. I'm sitting there and I went in with uh, 230 pounds, I believe, wow. so, because I was heavy. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, they kept me there with the tube feeding me and stuff like that. I was there for already like a month and a half, almost two months. And they, uh, I was at 169 then. And they go to me, uh, there is nothing we can do. The swelling is not going down. So basically we're going to send you home. And I'm like, uh, what do you mean? And they're like, uh, there's nothing we can do. So uh, I come home with this machine, you know, with the liquid that I had. This nurse will come every two days to change the tubing and stuff like that. And I'm just sitting there, not able to eat or anything. And I have to go and see clients, you know, from, from that, that I have to, and I will go see them, disconnect the tube and plug it really quick. If all this blood will come out and they will go, oh, Julio, you're losing weight. Oh yeah, you know, and, and then drive back home. And I think, you know, it, it kept on going like that until I got down to almost like 120 or 110 pounds. Wow. And I remember coming back from seeing a client and he was like, Julio, you don't look good. I'm like, oh no, I just, I, I've been a little bit sick and stuff like that. Driving home and I get a flat tire. You know, I tried to change the tire, I couldn't. With the tube and everything, and I tried, I couldn't, and I started crying, you know, in, in, in summer, 105 degrees. And all of a sudden I just get somebody, a, a chat comes in like, do you need help? And I'm like, yeah, I can because I have, and I don't have, I don't have any power to, you know, to, to, uh, to change it. I think I put my head down for a little while. I don't, I don't know how long. When I went up, the tire was changed. He was gone. 
I drive home and I come into the living room and I just go on my knees and I go, God, I, I can't take it anymore. Just take me. At this point, I'm watching Joe Austin every week and I do and, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And I just told, take me. And I felt this warmth in my body and I just fell to sleep. I think two weeks later, because they were doing MRIs every three weeks, uh, they called me like, Julio, the swelling is going down. And I'm like, yes, you know, and you start learning how to eat again. You know, like a one spoonful one a day, you know what I mean? Then little by little you start and everything starts getting better. You know, three months later, I get a call and like, Julio, need to come in. I'm like, okay. Uh, all these, you know, all these bags form outside your pancreas with the gastric fluid. And we need to cut you up from your sternum all the way to your private parts. Oh my goodness. And, and we have to, to, to open you up, you know what I mean? And I, and I look at them and I was like, uh, what are the chances? They go 50, 50. And I just felt the warmth again. And I go, I say, no. And he goes, are you stupid? You, you won't be able to work out. If one of those break in, they're going to eat you alive inside and all kinds of different stuff. And I say, no. Two and a half months later, I get a, another call. You need to come in. I'm like, oh my God, now what? And they go, I'm, I, I'm a scientist. I'm a doctor. I, I, look, this is the MRI for this and this is the MRI for now. And I see, you know, look, look at this, you know, the bags are gone. And there is like a string hanging here, like a, your body couldn't assimilate that. If that would have opened, you would have died and stuff like that. And we can understand what happens. And I just look up and I'm like, I knew what's God. You know what I mean? He saved you. He saved me again. Yeah. You know what I mean? So basically you see, it, it, it was always saying something like that. But what happened with alcoholism or any addiction, until you don't hit bottom, you don't stop drinking. I got stopped drinking because I got sick. So two months later, when everything is fine, everything is super cool, I get invited to a wedding and somebody tell me, oh, you can drink wine, Julio, right? And I went like, a, oh, yes, I can. Mm. I woke up the next day, like a nine bottles of wine in my hotel room. In there, and there, and I started all over again. And it got to a point that I, you know, that I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning, six pack, six o'clock in the morning, another six pack. So I was drinking almost 55 beers a day. And, that, and nobody knew. I was doing real estate. I was making money. Everything is fine. And one day, you know, I forget to buy beer. And I'm at four o'clock in the morning. I'm shaking. And I'm, I'm almost feeling like I'm dying because I've been drinking like that for six months, seven months. And all of a sudden, you know what I mean? I, I, I go and, and pull all the beers that I used to always hide in the corners, put in the trunk of my car and stuff like that. And that day I start going through beer, through beer, trying to drink. And I'm like a dying. And that's when I count the beers that I drink that day. It was like about 49 plus the beers that I drink on, on happy hour or, or lunch and stuff like that. It was about 55, 58 beers a day. And I'm going nuts. And I go into my room and I hit the, the, my clothes like this like, because I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm dying right now. I'm shaking and, and swelling and sweating. And I touch a jacket, there were two beers inside the, the, the jacket, two modelos. I drink one like crazy. I go on my knees, I drink the other one, and I say, God, I don't wanna drink anymore. Please, I don't wanna drink anymore. And I start crying. At this, by this time it's six o'clock, I go and buy another 12 pack, and I get a phone call like at seven o'clock in the morning to my sister-in-law. And she goes, Julio, hey, you know, my nephew was doing drugs and alcohol. And like, there is a place, you know, I need you to find out if they take payments. You know, she didn't know that God was using her to give me the information. The information, and that's where you went to rehab. Exactly. That's when I, I, I you know, I, I call and they didn't take payments. And all of a sudden, you know what I mean? I go, what, what about me? And they go, what about you? And I start telling them my story. Like, I can pick you up today. And I'm like, let's do it. They came to pick me up. He goes, get drunk. Because on the, it was all the way in Laguna Beach, super expensive, but you know, and I, it, it's, so I went. When I got there, I, I'm shaking again like crazy, you know what I mean? And, and they give me Lubrium. Lubrium is a drug that makes your body think that you are drinking still. Fill up all the paperwork, get credit cards to f try to pay everything right there and then. And I don't remember anything for a week. They said that I will get up with, with the IV to the bathroom and come back and go to sleep. And Basically, I wake up, get up one day, and you're like, hey, Julio, hey, Julio. I'm looking at everyone like, who is these people? You know what I mean? But it was, you know, so they kept me on that side of the, for a week, and after that, they moved me to the front. I pay a lot of money. It's the first time that I spent, I did something for myself. I was always buying people, helping people. Everybody has to be happy around me, but I never did anything but for myself. But you weren't happy. Ah, at all. I always felt lonely. I always felt like, you know, nobody cared or whatever. Yeah. So that time, 
And I remember when I moved to the other one, they had a chef, they had, a, you know, a trainer, a meditation, all this stuff. And then I start talking to people and it's like I knew them for years because, you know, addicts understand addicts, yes. alcoholics understand alcoholics, you know. And that's where the journey start. And I went, I with the therapy over there and I started working on, on my childhood. I started doing all the different stuff, all this work, all yeah. this stuff. And when he was ready to, to get out, you know what I mean? It was the most scary thing because now I, I don't have my, my best friend, alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I and I got out of there. And at that time, they uh, we were already getting separated with my ex-wife and I, I couldn't go back to the house because if I go to the house, she knows which button to push and I know which buttons to push on our fights. And they told me, you're going to drink again if you go back over there. What year was this? Uh, 2006. Okay. So what happens, I bought this house that we're, we're filming on right now to flip it. So what happens, I came directly to this house. I never went back home. And I remember paying the mortgages for five houses that I have. Yeah, four or five, yeah, four or five houses that I have. Merced, I, I, I have one in the golf course. I have one in the house that we live on. I have the condo in Huntington Beach and I had this house. And after paying everything, I look at my bank account, $100. <laughs> yes, a hundred dollars. I yeah. have a hundred forty thousand Mercedes Benz Special Edition parking the downstairs. Mm -hmm. I had all this Louis Vuitton, those Gucci, this Dodge, everything. You know what Every, I mean? Everything in the world. Everything in the world, but a hundred dollars in the bank. And that's wow. when I sat at the edge of my bed in this house. I remember, and I went like, a "God, please remind me why why you put it in my heart? What am, what am I supposed to? What did I wanted to do when I was a kid?" And all came down. Act filming, making films, you know, having my own product. Because at this time, when I was a dishwasher, I became the prep cook, the tech cook, the grill cook, the sous chef, and the chef of the restaurant. And I run a couple of restaurants during that period that, that I was I was growing. And cooking, I love cooking, you know. And through all this time, I've been to therapy too, working on myself, finding myself and stuff like that. And now it gets to a point where, where I'm sitting there with nothing, basically, in everything at the same time, you know what I mean? And I, I, just, I just went like, a, what am I gonna do now? So next day I put my Dolce Gabbana suit, I put my, my, my Louis Vuitton shoes, and I drove that car that I couldn't even afford to work. Couldn't even afford the gas. The gas. Wow. And, and, and it's when, when you, under, you understand, you know what I mean, right there, that's the, but now I, can do, I have to do it sober, that is worse. I, I cannot drink it off and, and feel good about myself. Now I have to rely on God. And that when it came into my, when my faith starts completely growing and I, I, I understand that God took me from making all this money and, and, and going through everything. But now, you know, you know, it's, you're here with me. It's almost like the story of Job. Uh, someone called, uh, you know, Job, uh, when the Bible was talking about when the enemy went to go talk and, and, the, and then God said, why don't you, why don't you test him? Mm -hmm. uh, you can't touch him, but you can test him. Mm -hmm. And he lost everything, and he was on top of the world. Exactly. Job had everything. He had the calves. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's that was money back in the day. Exactly. He had everything, and he lost it all. Exactly. Lost his whole family. And through that, what I'm hearing from you is, you didn't curse God. You went to God. Mm -hmm. Job didn't curse God. He went to God. Mm -hmm. Job. Job said. Um, he 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 literally declothed himself, got naked, took, shaved his head, and said, "This is the way I came in. This is the way I go. Mm -hmm. God, I'm I'm going to eat. like, I'm thinking of that to you like you you sit at the edge of your bed upstairs and you're like, remind me as a kid why, like why I, what's my calling, what's mm -hmm. my passion, and just a thing like it was like the story of Job. Mm -hmm. At the end, he just he just said, God, I surrender. I'm not going to curse you. I need you." And to think like that's where you are, you was in the top of everything, lost everything. Then you rock your way back up. Then you and it's like, well, God kept you. You didn't curse him. You always loved him. And that's why, like now, look where you're at. You know, you are a now you are the filmmaker. Now you are the producer. Now you are the director. Now you are the actor. What you wanted at seven years old when you first saw ballet, when you first saw Thriller. Now you're living that life mm -hmm. because you didn't choose to curse God. Mm -hmm. You chose to, God, I need you. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh, right now I, I, I get emotional because it's true. I, 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 you know, 
I never got to a point that like a gah why I always say you know you know best <laughs> and I always I always uh, I tell you, you know every time that something happens to me because no everything is is a, a color rose no. you can be no. doing movies and all of a sudden next day we had the pandemic and everything is gone then all of a sudden the the uh, you know the uh, writers uh, the writers <laughs> strike. Uh, strike the actor is like 11 months and you can do anything or you know but there you go there is the hot sauce you know what i mean there is the Which we gonna, yeah there is the, 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 the real estate there is a stuff but but it gets to a point that you know they the and, and that's what happened that moment i just went like what am i gonna do about it and i remember my son at uh, that time he, he started staying with me here at the house and i was downstairs and i was reading a, a book that is called meissner technique it's a, it's a it's an acting technique and he saw me he went oh i'm taking classes with with a guy who who got trained by by uh, uh, wow. sam for meisner do you want me to hook you up and i'm like yeah i went for an interview and they accepted me and there i started my journey you know two and a half years of acting wow acting classes you know what i mean and he says something he said you know if you want to make more movies you have to make your own movies if you want to be in more movies and what happens i next day i open tomorrowland and how that name came to when I was 14 years old through 18 through 36, 37, when I used to get drunk, I used to always grab a pad and go, Tomorrowland, 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 because I didn't know where I was from. I didn't know if I was from Guatemala, if I was from the United States. I didn't know who I was. I, I, was, I was lost. And I used to write Tomorrowland, Tomorrowland, like I'm saying, where, where is my Tomorrowland? You know what I mean? So when it came down to open my production company, Tomorrow, oh, man. there we go. And if you look my logo on, on my on my videos, that writing is my writing. Really, on, on the logo, yeah. Wow. So that's you know, that's so crazy. so that's that's my handwriting, and that's when I went to open the next day with the corporation, and I make myself responsible, and I put it on Facebook. I have a corpor a, a, a production company now. I didn't have anything, and people start asking me, "What are you going to be filming and stuff like that?" And that's when you know, at, like a year and a half later, I did my first short, and I went for an audition. And then, you know, all of a sudden I got a part, you know, as a Mexican cashier, I go over there and talk to what, some of the people who went to school with me, you know, they, they, uh, they, they were working on the film already. And, and he goes like, hey, uh, will, uh, my producer want to talk to you because you have a production company. They call me later, right? And I went to meet with them and he's like, hey, Julio, we will let you to, for you to partner up with us to make a, a feature film. And I'm like here, just doing just one short, <laughs> you know, an actor, and I didn't wow. know what I was doing, but I go like, I, I I always tell people when you get to the edge, either you jump or you don't. And when you jump, before you hit the ground, God is gonna give you wins. Don't worry, because if not, he will not put that dream in your, in, in your heart. Yeah. And that happens so many times where I jump and I'm like, ah, why did I do this? And all of a sudden, wins come in. So I went to a meeting and, and, and they go like, oh, Julio, we need like $75,000 from your production company. I only had like 30 grand at that time. And, and stuff like that, you know, and I felt the warmth again. Yeah, that's my sign that I have to do it. The same thing with the hot sauce. I felt the warm to. And, and I walk out of there and I look up and God, you're my bank. Because I don't know when, I, when am I going to get $75,000 right now? I don't know. <laughs> and I got to a point two weeks late, uh, two weeks before I have to come up with the money. I didn't have the money. And I just went, you know, I was going to call them and tell them, look, I, I don't have the money. I can't do it. And all of a sudden, I get a phone call and this guy, hey, Julio, I'm selling, I want to I wanna sell my duplex. And I want to buy a, a million dollar ranch. And the person who sells the, the ranch doesn't have representation. So you can represent them. And she wants to buy another property. So I play that call, but in a different way. Look, you have to wait for me another month. And they go, oh, don't worry, Julio. We, we're running behind. So I close all those deals. I get the $75,000. And there I am being a producer without knowing nothing. And, and that's the film that I learned everything that I didn't want to do with anything. So I think God put me there and that way I can see, you're not going to treat the, the crew this way. You're going to do this. You're going to treat, you know, everything that I learned over there. But that's the moment when I knew, you know, that, that if I didn't jump, I wouldn't be even making films. Maybe I, I, I will be ad auditioning right now. That's it, you know. And it took me to a different thinking, but I was like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and wow. it's amazing, you know. But at the same time, you know, just going through the, that motion, you know what I mean? And at the same time, I'm doing the, the hot sauce too. You know, uh, we used to have a, a restaurant with one of our family members before, you know, and we went, we separated ourselves and I decided to keep the hot sauce. There it is. Here's mm -hmm. one of them. So is that one focusing? Is, mm -hmm. Focused? Okay. So that one is the the uh, the habanero. All oh. the other flavors are my flavors and, and, and it, it worked. You know what I mean? Sorry. Mm -hmm. So we have it, we have it, you know what I mean, in uh, like a, a hundred stores right now, 100 
20 stores. Wow. We have it in Japan. We have it in, in Australia. So that's something, you know. And I tell you, it's true, you know. Ashley it, loves it. Oh, yeah. So. That's awesome. <laughs> you guys are taking some bottles there for sure. So it's really cool. But I think, you know, uh, we have a lot of talents and, and a lot of things that we want to do. And sometimes we go like, oh, no, you have to focus on one. No, God give you, put something inside of you that it, I love cooking. And that's why I, I, I went for the hot sauce. And on the rough time when the pandemic came. Not, this is what helped yeah, you. Real estate down, loans down, movies down, but everybody was at home ordering Formosa. If it wasn't for Formosa, I wouldn't have been able to make it. Wow. You know what I mean? So what happens, you have to understand that God give you a bunch of different ideas, you know? And he wouldn't put it in, in your head or your heart if, if you didn't, if, you know. It's the same thing, you know, when you go through the relationships, too, you know what I mean? Uh, why, like I, I was telling you earlier, you know what I mean? God will break your heart to save your soul. And what happened, you go to those relationships to learn more about yourself, why you need to work on yourself more. And it's, it's amazing, it's you know what I mean? How yeah. life changes and stuff like that. And just listening to you, it, it all makes sense on why you are who you are today. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you started that short, you started, you know, your first production not knowing nothing. But you learned a trait in real estate years before mm-hmm. you started doing it. And that was able to get you into the the footstep, you know, into the door, into the room of your first production. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to name a few movies. And, and then I want to talk a little bit about the film industry and a little bit about film. Because um, not a lot of Christians, not a lot of people who love God and chase after God like you did your mm-hmm. whole entire life. Uh, not a lot of them are in films. And if they are, they're quiet mm-hmm. about their faith because they believe, you know, I, I believe just for me, their ability, the fact that they're, they have faith in Jesus in God, it, it's like, oh, this door might close. Mm-hmm. Not knowing that, well, maybe if you talk about Jesus a little more, mm-hmm. maybe even more doors are going to open exactly. and, and, and other things are going to happen. You know, mm-hmm. you've been able to, um, let me see here. This is just a few uh, a few films that you that are written here. A Place on the Field, mm-hmm. On Our Way, Buck Run, At Last, Wolf Mother, and you're currently in uh, post-production for Dope Queens. Mm-hmm. And that's only just a few. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to know because, th- you know, obviously it's called creative culture, right? Our slogan is creatives like you and I can change the culture we mm-hmm. live in today. You did all these featured films. What even... What was that process of starting to do films? Because we only get to see the finished product. Mm-hmm. And these finished products are incredible, mm-hmm. are amazing. But it's no one sees the A to Y. They only see the Z. <laughs> so if you can just share a little bit about that, because I know it's... The process yeah. is, if, if this is what happened. You know, if you're going to get into this business, it's, 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 you have to be tough. And you have to understand, you know what I mean? That it's going to be a lot of no's. And, you know, I, I've been, you know, I, to any film that you make, you get maybe like about a hundred no's, you know? But one thing that I understood was if God gave me the capacity to do real estate, he gave me the capacity to do Formosa. He gave me all this, uh, these different things that I can do. What happens, you have to be able to mix business with your artistic part. part mm. you know? I mean, you can just not be artistic. You have to have the business too. And that can be learned, you know, by you, you know, trying other things. That was, that's why I always tell people, you have to try different things. But to make a film, you know, you have to develop the script. And that's the good thing that we have our company. We have writers where we develop a, a story, a script, you know, we, like, a, and, and basically, you know, it takes maybe like from three months to six months to develop a script. Wow. Then after that, you have to f- hire a line producer who is going to come and break that, that script a, and get you the budget. And then he's, uh, that, that person is going to do a scene-by-scene scene schedule where you're going to have like a, oh, 10 scenes are going to be filming the house, 10 films are going to be f- filming the bank. 10 f- and when you have that breakdown, now you know how much you need to put together. A- and now you have the breakdown and you can see your actors that you want to go after, how many days you're going to need them and, and stuff. So there we go. You have the, the script, you have the budget, now you have the scene-by-scene. Scene, and now you want to start sharing it, you know, with the actors that you want and that way you can make them come alone or at least like give you, you a letter of, you, of, of you pitch it right yeah and see if they want to do it or not after that it comes you know the pitching uh, to put the money together money together you know usually I, I always put money on my films at least you know one third to third and, and the last one i put almost all the money 
Wow. So what happens is uh, each film gets better. You know, ideas get better. But I always wanted to, to tell uh, stories of multicultural, you know, different things that happen in the world, you know, and we, do, we base a lot of uh, scripts from real life too. Yes. So what happens, you know, when we tell a story, people can relate to it. After you finally get the money together, and sometimes you don't get the money together for the whole film. You have yes for pre -pro, uh, you have pre production. A pre production is developing the script, getting the money together, and and now looking for location, getting the location together, hiring all the the the, the crew, getting all the, the the cast to sign up on your film. All that's pre production. When you have all that set up, you know, and you're ready to uh, you know get insurance, uh, uh, you have to do contract with the unions. It's a lot of work. Where everybody's going to stay, how who is going to eat, how we're going to transfer. Oh, it's, it's like a, it's it's a, a equipment and everything. So it's so much that is going on. Then after that, the pre-production. Then it comes the production where you actually film from uh, to, uh, uh, 20 days to, to, to 45 days. And sometimes you guys have to go on location. When you're filming, you know, a lot of things can happen. And I'm going to tell you this story really quickly because it's, it's, it's uh, something that I remember we had a problem with money in, in, in book run. Uh, I think, I don't know what happened with one of the lenses, something fell down. Oh. Uh, and, 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 you know, we're not talking about lenses of uh, no, 20, no, no, no. $50,000 lenses. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah, we're talking about a lot of money and, and we needed more money. And I remember that day they came up to me and I went like, uh, don't worry about it. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna do it, you know, and we're gonna get it done. I look up and I say, God, you're my bank again, you know? And I didn't notice there were people from the crew behind me. And I can hear the little laughing and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I look back and I just kept on walking. That day we're, uh, we're watching the dailies. You know, everything you film during the day, you know what I mean? To see everything is fine and stuff like that. And my phone started going ping, ping, ping. I put it on silence. We finish everything. I start walking to my, to my room and I'm like, where am I going to get more money? Where am I going to get more money? I already left the Bay Area. I, I thought I had enough money for everything. Now we need more money. And all of a sudden, I, I open my phone, 13000 18000 23000 I'm like, no what, is, what happens before we left, I, we had a big order for cost plus for Formosa. And they told us. For who? Formosa, for the yeah, hot sauce. Yeah, yeah. So we, we sent all these hot sauce to them. And what happened, they told me it was going to take 60 to 90 days to pay me. I tried to tell them, can you pay me early? And they go, no, if no, we're going to cancel the POs. What happened? They made a mistake and they paid me everything at once. That wasn't a mistake, of course. That was God. You know that. <laughs> so next oh, day, yeah. I'm writing a $50,000 check. That's crazy. I'm writing a $50,000 check. And, and they look at me like, how do you do it? And I, and I just went, remember, God is my bank. And, and now I laugh at them. But from that, that day forward, that set change because people will come to me, hey, can you pray? Can you do this? Can you do that? And it changed the culture, you know. My my director, he ended up uh, accepting Jesus, you know what I mean? And all kind of different stuff. My other producer too, you know, it's my good friend, you know, we're producers together, you know. That's, that's insane. And, and that's what happens, you know. That's insane. But it's about, about, if I didn't jump, I wouldn't be there, you know what I mean? Because I was so afraid to do it. And I think, you know, like my last production, you know, when I put all the money, I didn't, I, I didn't know how I was going to put it together. You know what I mean? And it happens. But then now you have the, 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 uh, the pandemic. Now you have all these things that are getting you behind. And that's the test that you have to pass because now uh, people who invest in the film are like, oh, where's my money, right? Yeah, where's my, where's but my return? But the good thing about it that if you do contracts and you show them that things like this can happen, you know what I mean? And you explain there is a risk too. It's, it's fine, but now, you know, God showed you too who you were doing business with too. So those things reveal people. That, that's the thing that I love about that because now it reveals who was there just for the money, who was there for whatever. And when it reveals that, it guys show you, okay, these people have to grow, keep on growing with you and these people don't have to be growing with you. You know what I mean? So it's really funny, but eventually God always opened the doors and, 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 and you know, everything gets taken care of. You know what I mean? So that's, it's amazing. That's crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what was the last film that I think you just, I wanted to go see. I haven't been able to see it yet. You just, I think it was sold to Paramount, correct? You no, know, it was sold to Lionsgate. Lionsgate, that's what it was. That, that, that movie is amazing. It's a, it's, it's a place in the field. It's about, you know, it tells you about uh, uh, PTSD, but also it, you see it from a, a woman's side. You see it from what, what really goes on on, people, on on their heads, you know what I mean? And you see it from a mother's side. You see it from all different aspects, you know. So it's an amazing film. 
And that's the film, the first, you know, studio film, you know what I mean? So, so it's, it's super proud to be, you know, Lionsgate and stuff like that. But at the same time, it shows you that all the work pays off. It shows you, you know what I mean? That now you in a, a, you, you have connections. And why I always tell people to always, always be yourself and be who you are? Because I remember being on one of those Q&As over there, you know, just watching and all of a sudden, you know, this, the main guy from, from the studio goes and asks somebody, hey, where you go to school? Oh, MIT, I have this. Where you go to school? Oh, USC, I have these, these things. What about you, Julio? Oh, no, I came to this country washing dishes and cleaning bathrooms. <laughs> and everybody start laughing. Wow. But is it true? Yeah. I don't have a, a, a bachelor's. I don't have, I, 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 I be, you know, and, and what happens, he, he formed that relationship with this person and now we, we're talking like, like friends. And that's, and, and that's how it happened because you're honest about it. You know what I mean? You know what it is? You have a, you got to start telling people you have a PhD in faith. Exactly. Because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. You you have, yeah, I have a bachelor's mm -hmm. in faith. That's exactly. what it is. I got my master's in faith. And everybody always <laughs> yeah. make fun of me when like, Julio, how are we going to do this? Uh, I got in my bank and I walk away. Always say that. And now even when I go through a lot of stuff, you know, right, it has, it has been rough for the last two years. You know, we, I mean, three years, we have the pandemic, we have the recession, we have, you know, a, a, a strikes, we have all this stuff going on, but you, you, you can lose the faith. And every time that something happens, I always tell God, I will pass the test. That's all that I say. I'm not giving up. And another thing that I always tell people, you have to speak like already happened because people mm. were laughing at me. When that's I say, when I say I was, uh, like, when I opened my, my, my production that's, that's company good. and I say, we're going to be making films. And they start laughing. When I told everybody I was going back to acting school with your accent, with you, who you think you are, you're already 37 years old. I didn't, I didn't make my first uh, short until I was 41. Wow. You know what I mean? So first of all, it's never too late. Never. never. Because God will give you your time back. Yeah. No matter what, God will give you your time back. And it's always about you have to become like a horse. You put the blinders on. And, and, and you have to go for it. You run the race. Because what happens if you start listening to people, it's always going to be a reflection of what they cannot do. Mm. It's, wow. it's going to be a reflection, and your reflection can be based on that. And that's one thing that I learned. Uh, one of the hardest things that I learned to when I came out of rehab is learning not how to say no. And that's the thing that, that is going to kill you, that is going to uh, get you frustrated, that is going to, because saying no is the hardest thing in life. And you have to learn it. You know, it's, if you don't learn to, how to say no, because you have to take care of yourself first. If somebody wants to make you feel guilty because you're not going to lunch or going out to the game with them, because I went with you last week and stuff like that, it's about them. It's not about you. Uh, if you want to go to the movie, you go to the movie. You don't want to go to the movie, you don't. You know, but you have to take care of yourself because what happens, in order for you to be able to, to listen to God and to be in peace, you have to be in peace with God and yourself, not anybody else. But I'm going to tell you something. We're not perfect. And like I was telling you before about the narcissistic relationship that I went into, I went to therapy. I, I loving myself, or blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? I, I, I did Tony Robbins. I did, you know, Walter Rizzo. You know what I mean? I, you know, I did all this stuff and you're feeling good. But all of a sudden somebody comes with a, a love bombing and you never experience it. You get you, you, I'm sorry to say it, this, you know, you get your ass kicked. Mm -hmm. And why do, uh, God does that? Because we get a little bit cocky when we start feeling good and we understand people and we're like, I'm not going to do that. I, I have to love myself. But yeah, you know, always God's first, you know, that's the first thing. But then what happens, there are sections in your life that you think that you work out and you didn't, you know? So what happens when I went through that, I, I, like I was telling you earlier, you know, I mean, God will break your heart to save your soul. And you have to go through that. I think that's the title of this one. Mm -hmm. I think the title, the title of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of this this episode is mm -hmm. God will break your heart to save your soul. Exactly. And I tell you, I've been through so much, you know what I mean? When it comes to, you know, and, and you know, it, I, I want to make it clear, you know what I mean? There is a lot of lonely nights, but it's the difference be, between being lonely and being alone. That's the difference. <laughs> Feeling lonely is because yeah. you still want to be seen. You still want to be loved. You still, all this blah, 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 course, blah, 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 blah. Of course. And being alone means, yeah, you want a partner. Yeah, you want a, a family. Yeah, you want this, but you understand that God will give it to you when it's the right time. 
You know what I mean? Because the other day I told God, God, please, you start choosing for me because I, I, I sh I'm, I'm the worst to choose. To. <laughs> you know what I mean? Please just choose for me. I, I'm giving up on that. But what happens sometimes we, we think we find someone, like as some people can tell you, oh, I want consistency. After two months, everything changes. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And you're not listening right because what happened, they're telling you what they don't do. You see? Usually people talk about the stuff. Yeah, unplug my mic. Uh -huh. they, they don't do. So that's what, I, what I, I, I learned. I go like, okay, okay, let me go consistency. Let me do, oh, oh it's too much. Oh, it's too, you know, you overwhelm the other person. But why? Because you're being consistent. Why? Because you, and they are the one who change after two months. And you're still the same and you're still doing the same thing. So what happens, we have to pay attention when people is telling us who they are. We have to pay attention, you know, in, in what we do. And basically God tells us all the time, I'm going uh, uh, to, uh, the problem that we don't listen to God, God wants to give us a sermon and the Holy Spirit too. This, I call this the Holy Spirit. Have you noticed when you live in the house and you have a jacket in the corner, right? Mm -hmm. You look at the jacket and you're like, ah, no, it's sunny. And you leave. Four o'clock, five o'clock, you're like, uh. God, you know, the, those little things that but you don't you listen. You looked at the jacket. Yeah. If, if, if it <laughs> God, I call it the Holy Spirit. I, people call it, no, you it know. No, it is. It's the Holy Spirit. It's telling you. So I'm like, a, okay, now I pay attention. I'm walking out and I see jacket. Okay, don't worry. I'll take the jacket. You know, and that's what happens sometimes. We walk away from the discernment. You know, usually what I do, I go like this. Okay, uh, ah, you know, I did something for somebody and like, a, oh, I was just helping. Julio, shut up. What part of the problem you on? Blah, 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 blah. No, Julio, what? and finally I go like, okay, oh, you say this, this, and this. Oh, you open the door for this, this, and this. Okay, so you own 10%. You own 20%, you own 50%. And when you find out what you own before you start getting mad or, or blaming anything like that, you accept it, you forgive yourself, and you, you become more at peace. If the other person is supposed to apologize, they don't uh, forgive them anyway. Or if you need to apologize, apologize. But what happens when you own it before you start blaming, then it changes the whole thing because now you know that you own a part of that problem. If you would have done it, if, if you wouldn't have a problem. Yeah. And that, that makes you go in peace too. So I think, you know, that's one thing that we have to look at ourselves. You know what I mean? And you know something, there is always procrastination. There's something, you know, uh, working out, eating right, doing a bunch of different stuff. But we have to understand that we're not perfect. No. And we're not perfect. And what happens, God, if uh, I, yesterday I post something, you know, take the first step and just focus on the first step. Don't, don't focus on anything else. Because if you do the first step, then you, the second one is easier, easier, and easier. But I, I found myself sometimes, honestly, you know, when everything is going wrong, I want to come home and I want to just crawl in bed. But some days it's good to crawl in bed and stay there for one day only, but then next day get up. If you need to cry, cry. cry. If you need to scream, scream. scream. But next day, what is going to happen? You don't have to crawl out of bed and you're going to have to go after because God has, has a, an assignment for you. And I like... Pastor, pastor preached what? How many weeks was it? Mm -hmm. Six weeks, I believe. No, it was more. It was more than six weeks. No, it huh? was like a, on like assignment, two, right? Yeah, two, yeah like two, almost two and a half months. I think. Yeah, it was like, three, yeah, he preached about that for a reason. And, and look at that, you know, the the church that we go to, Redemption. Yeah, our you know church I mean? is incredible. It's incredible because it, it's not about oh, you sin, you're going into hell. No, it's about you know teaching. The teaching, it tells you, you know, I mean, what you need to do. It tells you the truth. You know what I mean? It's, it, I know that sin is bad. But what happens, you know, we make mistakes and, and, and if we try our heart, we can, we can move forward, but we can know uh, uh, the guilt. This is what killed me so, so much. And, and that's one of the reasons that I used to drink a lot too, feeling guilty. Oh, why did I do this? Why did I waste this? Why did I do that? Oh my God. I carried that backpack for so many years that when I stopped drinking and, and I came into the place where I start forgiving myself, it's like you open a hole in, in the backpack mm. and all those rocks start falling off. And now you can start climbing up to your, to your purpose, but you need to let go of, of what you did before, you know, and that's something that we carry all the time. And, and to me, it was so heavy on me all the time. Now, the only thing that I can do, you know, if I made a mistake is ask for forgiveness. What I can do is say, you know, forgive myself. And now how can I fix the problem or, or, or move forward? Move forward. But it's a, our, our brains is like, a, oh no, you know, yeah. I feel bad, but what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Life is so simple. We make it difficult. Yeah, it's it's like a, we dig the hole and we keep on digging a hole. And you just feel like that's, a, that's you know, so true. And it's so true. Yeah. And you know, one thing you you have to do is is uh, you you will find your people. Uh, I don't have that many friends, to be honest with you. Uh, Same. Yeah, 
Mm -hmm. Same. Especially with the word that we got. Mm -hmm. They said, be very careful who you now have in your friendship. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they always said it. Show me your friends. I show you your future. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's true. If you wrap yourself around people who are alcoholics, eventually you're going to become an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. If you wrap yourself around businessmen, you're eventually going to become a businessman. Mm -hmm. Like if you, it's so true because I've noticed that the people that God has placed in our life are very uh, business savvy, are very intelligent with finances and are very um, after well, if this is what God placed on my heart. This is what God called me to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. And now I'm in a position where I'm like, well, I'm called to do it. I'm going to do it. Do I, how do I know the finances are going to come? I have no idea. Like you said, God, God's bank. Mm -hmm. I told Ashley, he, he has so much in his bank. They don't even have a word for it. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> it's called God. Like, because he's the <laughs> ultimate bank, you know, he's the ultimate lender. Mm -hmm. He's the, he is where you go to, to get everything that you need. And just hearing from you, everything I hear, man, is just like you lived a life full of faith. Even when you didn't see it, you just did it. And, and that's, that's the thing, you know, um, uh, one thing that I, I'm going to say, whenever you're going through these rough times, the thing that you have to sit down is, is uh, and say, you know, I, I, I know there's something, I'm, I'm not doing something right. I have to find what it is. But at the same time, you have to ask, you know, what lesson am I learning? Mm -hmm. What God is trying to teach me? No, don't go into that guilt trip that I did something wrong. Yeah. But going to that place like, okay, what you want me to learn? Yeah. What am I supposed to let go? And the thing about it is, is I always tell people, work on mind body and spirit and you know like I, I i preach about therapy you know when i when i went to that rough relationship you know i i went to therapy and you know what i did i i told the therapist look i i, I i'm not gonna do one hour a week i'm gonna do two three hours a day for three times a week and if are you willing to do that with me because when you go to therapy okay one hour and we come back next week you already It's, you know, it's not You're already back to yeah. <laughs> square so, one. So what I did, I went like this. Da, da, da. And, and, and she goes, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, I'm serious. And then I went at it. And I found, you know, and one thing that I work on, uh, work on was, you know, generational uh, courses too, or chains that we carry. And what we did on that, you know, on that therapy, that's what I love about that therapy. We write our, our, our tree, you know, our ancestral tree. And we look at our dad and we see what are the patterns that comes down because we have the genes too and everything. And a lot of people don't believe it, but I believe it. And I can see on, on my father's side, alcoholism, diabetes, you know what I mean? A, a, a living wife with kids, doing all this stuff, you know? Wow. It was like a, like a something that I needed to break. And, I, and you work on that. Uh, before, when I used to tell uh, people who used to ask me about my dad, we go, oh, my dad did this, really upset. After this therapy, I was able to give him back everything that I didn't want from him and kept what he what, what I want. He already passed. <clears throat> and what happens, now you ask me about my dad, I'm like, a, I go blank. I'm, I don't feel the hate anymore or, yeah. or, 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 or being upset anymore. But that, that's what therapy does, you know what I mean? That we have to work to a place where we have to, to understand the, and we have to go back to childhood. We have to go back to everything and we have to clean up our, 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 ourselves, you know what I mean? And what happens when you do that, You can move on and you can take that backpack and our rock falls out of the backpack, you know, because we, you know, we always healing, always yes, healing. Always. And always. that's what we have to understand, you know, like if you talk about love, you know, what are the, the pillars of love? You know, is you're going to talk, you know, a, a friendship, love, honesty. Uh, we have, a, 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 you know, a honesty, a, a loyalty. You know, have your loyalty too, you know what I mean? So you have to have all this, all this, uh, this, 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 uh, these pillars for a relationship to work, you know what I mean? But, you know, communication too. So basically, if you don't have those those pillars, you know what I mean? It doesn't work, you know what I mean? Work. And that's it's, everything. It's wobbly. It's, and it's everything. It's wobbly. Everything. Relationship with friends everything, and everything and yes. stuff like that. So, it, but, but you always have to go back to you. Always. Anything that, that is not going always. good, first of all, look at yourself and see what is, what, what is my part on it. What am I doing over here? And then I always call it, uh, do your Michael Jackson, your moonwalk. If it isn't for good for you, you do to you moonwalk. You're gonna hear me always saying that I, I'm moonwalking out of this, man. You know what yeah. I mean? Because you have to. That's good. That's good. I think this is a good place to stop for now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to do a part two. Okay. For sure. And um maybe man, you just have so much to say, so much. 
because you've been through so much. And I think it's incredible because people need to know that in order to you, you know, in order for you to be quote unquote, what everyone says is successful. Mm -hmm. You got to experience a lot of things in life and a lot mm -hmm. of trials. And I'm just grateful that there's a person that I'm, I'm connected with a friend with that can almost even help me through the moments, just through the conversations that you and I have. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible. And, and I'm glad that I got to sit down with you today. I think this is just the beginning and uh, man, I'm excited. I'm going to put all your links down uh, for, for people to follow you mm -hmm. on social media, your Thank tomorrow you. land, uh, your amazing sauce. Thank you. All that, because uh, I think you're an incredible guy and to get to know somebody um, on a personal level, it, it makes you honor that person even more because of what they've been through. Thank I you. didn't know that you've been through it mm -hmm. because you don't walk like you've been through it. Mm -hmm. You walk victorious and you walk victorious because of, of everything that you've had to uh, go through. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you for having for, me. I'm, thank I'm, you for letting me come to your house and take <laughs> over your living room. No, thank you for coming. Honestly, you, <laughs> you know, know? I mean, this is amazing. And, and yeah. I, I, uh, I want to give you props. You know, you guys are so professional. You guys are amazing. You're a good friend, you know, and, and uh, you, you, your faith moved me too. Your wife too, you know, it, it, it moves me. You know what I mean? How, how faithful you are. And, and it's an example to, to really, you know what I mean? Uh, how a couple... And a, and a husband and wife should be because you you guys support each other so so beautifully and and just by looking at that I go like oh wow even if you know sometimes you don't see it uh, you know sometimes we, we like this and people is looking at us you know what I mean I admire you for for the relationship that you guys that. and who, for who you are too and and you a stand up guy too you you go through through everything and, and you just keep on going too and and, and your wife too smile on the face man. you have to because God is is always there you know yeah. what I mean so thank you for having me no, it's, thank it's you. awesome no thank you and we're gonna for sure do a part two and uh thank you sweetheart for sitting over there and she's been directing the whole podcast so yeah, something's amazing. wrong they've heard no, I'm no. just kidding <laughs> uh thank you guys for tuning in here at creative culture where we believe creatives like you and I can change the culture we live in today go be the change of the culture we'll see you on the next one <laughs>